And welcome back to Stairwells. Hello, everyone. Domesticity 4. <laughs> I am here with Josh Foreman, level art designer specialist. <laughs> that's I don't think that's your actual title. Guru. 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 Okay, I forgot Guru. Yeah. I knew we were missing something. And we are playing this lovely game. I was researching something. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. I want to go back to the water cooler. I like the way the light was coming through the glass door and shining through the water cooler and onto the fridge. Ooh, yeah. That is nice, seeing the blue cast on it. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, I love it. Yeah, who cares about that character? I want to look at the water cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, spicy dumpling. Ooh. That sounds good. There we go. So clearly this would be this, to clarify, because I was confused over the last ones when this uh, took place. It's clearly after the events of Uncharted 1 through 3. So. Yeah. Since you got your girl. They seem to have settled down. No more climbing around on speeding, wrecking trains. I'm assuming the rest of the game takes place in the home here. <laughs> That'd be a fun twist. You're gonna get into squabbles with your wife from time to time. And... So how much of this are you controlling? Uh, I mean, I'm uh, controlling most of it. It's only occasionally when they... Did uh, she ask you to get food? Is that why you went there? I assume so. Okay. I was too busy staring at the water cooler in the fridge. <laughs> Finish it? Yeah. Oh. You know, it's probably too long and full of typos. She was, uh, was she a reporter? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That looks good. Mm-hmm. So, how was your day? <laughs> She's eating fast. What was your day? <laughs> Get subtitles. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How was your day? Oh, it was fine. Mm -hmm. Typical day in paradise. Mm -hmm. I uh, I got to pull a bunch of garbage out of a river. I hope you took a shower between you got to go for a swim. <laughs> then and now. Find any exciting yeah. garbage? Oh, it was a brilliant stuff. It was a uh, early 21st century truck. We got <laughs> apparently the natives called it a semi. <laughs> so, the boring stuff. Tell me about the article. Well, it started out as this fluff piece about tourism in Bangkok, but I don't think the magazine is going to like the angle. See, like, obviously, this is meant to be a scene that's Everyone sort of like dull and domestic and simple, but the. The yeah. character performance stuff we're getting in here is really nice, and this is the wonderful thing with performance capture. You get... And this is this is so stupid. If this was... A, like, this is a trope in a lot of movies. The, the adventure who's meant for adventure is being called to it, but he's stuck in his mundane life, right? But the fact <laughs> that, the, that the fidelity and the quality of this, you know, cutscene that we're seeing is... It's so great. It's like it's this is its own um, interest point or whatever, right? Yeah. Whereas in a movie, it would be meant to be just passed through quickly. You know, you get the point. He wants to go on an adventure, and something's gonna something's going to instigate that he has to go back to to adventure. And it looks like you get to you get to do a little instigating on your own. That's nice. Now they they can't. See, so even Nate wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> he was probably listening to us. It's like, you're right, this scene is pretty brilliant. <laughs> oh, you're right, though. Like the, I love the lovingly rendered banality of, of this scene. And it's so rare a game gives you an opportunity to actually enjoy performance acting choices <laughs> that are like actually worth digging into. Mm -hmm. You know what? I don't want it. Games so rarely have quiet moments, period. Well, they're so hard to do. Yeah. Without doing a cutscene where you take control away. Yeah. I mean, usually they do it by diverting you with a slower paced activity like a puzzle or, or reading lore or something like that. Yeah. Okay, I just don't want you to not take it because of me. I'm not taking it because of me, okay? Here's the squabble part. <laughs> I appreciate the gesture. It's just... 
I'm gonna go ahead and do the dishes. No, stop, I'll do them. No, you on. did them last night. No, you cooked. I clean. It's fine. I mean, at least are, the, at least, are those uh, dishes actually empty? It looked like looked like the food kept getting replenished every time they needed <laughs> to take a bite. I'm totally watching that next time to see. <laughs> TV game thing. I bet I can beat your high score. Dog on it, Naughty Dog. You have to have flaws somewhere, and I'm going to find them. <laughs> well, they were careful to have the, the camera low enough where you you barely saw that just hints of food here and yeah. there. So it's easy to cheat that sort of thing. Chicken? Is it a bet? Oh, wow. Okay, cowboy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> station one. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is getting meta. Oh, we're gonna play a video game. <laughs> no, it has to load. Aww. Load? Yes. This is taking a really long time. <laughs> guess it's gonna be bad at it, right? Uh, I love that they're commenting on the load times. <laughs> hey, it's Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot. Uh, oh, now are you gonna be able to play a game in a game? That would be amazing. No, no, just, uh... How do you, uh... Let me get go. Oh, uh, that's fun. Nate sucks at video yeah. games. <laughs> All right, I got it. Okay, so you want to run towards the camera. Run to the camera. Oh, I don't like you it. are playing it. <laughs> and it's with old controls, too, where you had to use the D-pad because the original PS1 at first didn't have the, the analog nice. sticks. And you got four by three. This though. is amazing. <laughs> uh, back to Naughty Dog's roots. Oh, okay. Well, I suck at video games, too. <laughs> <laughs> You're role playing Nate very well. This is awesome. Good job. Uh, I feel like they're cheating a little bit, though. It looks like they've got um, perspective correction on their textures, which I don't think PlayStation 1 ever had. <laughs> the HD re release. <laughs> Whoa. Stop yelling at me. I adore this. Eh, no, no. <laughs> Naughty Dog, I actually want to see you guys go back and make. It doesn't have to be Crash Bandicoot. In fact, I would, I'd vote Jack. Jack and Daxter. I want to see Naughty Dog try Jack and Daxter again someday. Yeah. See where, they, see where they can take uh, classic platforming. Yeah. I mean, they've grown so much as a studio since those old days. I just would love to see what... Jack and Dexter from modern day Naughty Dog looks like. Eh. Why is a fox smashing crates? I got the collection on uh, Vita. I've yeah. never played two or three, so I've been trying to make myself do it. it it's hard. It's I, again getting back to the the problem with <laughs> games as a medium when there's when I've played so many uh, platformers at this point in my life, and I, at some point you just feel like you're doing the same thing over and over. And it's yeah. Just like, should be liking this. All the mechanics are exactly what I enjoyed when I was playing it before, but yeah. Bandicoot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is awesome. <laughs> what? Is that it? <laughs> you asked for it. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! I practically had it. You can give it another shot. Come on, double or nothing. My car could really use a good cleaning. Really? really? You're going to start yeah. the smack talk There's now? There's this mode called easy mode. I just switch it. Wow. It's pretty <laughs> just keep, talking. keep talking. What are you going to do? I'm, I'm warning. What are you going to do? Oh, it would be great if they had different dialogue on that based on what you actually selected. I am on easy mode. <laughs> uh, I love these two. Hey, are you happy? Yeah, of course. You? Um. Um? <laughs> really? Come here. This isn't going to turn into a God of War interactive uh, <laughs> sex scene. <Gosh. laughs> I do not miss those. Do they still do those? I haven't played a recent modern uh, God of War game. <sighs> Probably. Yeah. But, um, yes, they did. Of course. It's like, you oh, guys are yeah. still 13? <laughs> <laughs> We're closed! Come on, man. 
All right, I'm coming. I'm oh, coming. I want to see a little paper, please, mini game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can I help you? Yeah, I'm uh, looking for my little brother. Oh my god, if this is his brother, I'm totally shocked. <laughs> a little bit leaner. That he was dead. Definitely less gray in the temples. Sam? It's good to see you again, Nathan. Ah, who does he looks just like all right, all right, all right. Was it Beverly it. Hills 90210? How? Back in the 90s, there was a <laughs> sex symbol. I can't Luke Perry? Could it no? Maybe. There. His model looks exactly like I the the oh, character who plays him is um they patch me up. Uh, What's his face? The other video game male. Yeah, uh, Troy Baker. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other video game male. <laughs> that should go on a business card. I found it. it all confirmed you were dead. Well, Nathan, we killed a guard. Okay, so they wanted to see me rot in that cell for the rest of my life, and I nearly did. He's a Sam. I. Man, if I had known, I, I, I swear to you, I would have. I know he's in everything, but I never get tired of seeing Troy Baker in things. What's important now, though, is that I'm out. That's going to be an interesting artifact of the times, too. Like, historians going back and, and playing through games from this era. Like, why did all the male characters sound exactly yes. the same? It's like, <laughs> I mean, like, if you watch movies from the 50s and every actor was the same yeah. guy. <laughs> did video games just have, like, a union that comprised maybe two or three people, or...? It's a lot to digest, you know? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what, how these guys got the hegemony that they have. Over um, video game acting. So, I mean, Nolan North's first big role where everyone knew, hey, that's Nolan North, was Drake, right? Like Uncharted 1? Because from there, he started appearing in everything. I'm assuming because other game studios saw, wow, that guy was great. He'd be a yeah. great everyman character for our game. And then they kept bringing him in and having him play the same character with the same voice, even though he's capable of way more than that. Right. Like, you see him in the Arkham games where he plays the penguin. With like a Cockney British voice, and he's awesome. But uh, yeah, for about three or four years, he was in every big video game, playing himself like with the same with the Drake voice. Yeah. A few years back. And Troy Baker has narrowly evaded that by being able to at least put on a few different voices for the uh, I, I, characters they bring him in. Like for. I can't even differentiate them in my mind anymore. I, one of them is like the the male human in Guild Wars Two. There was a whole hell of a lot more on those ships than just treasure. I mean, what can I say? Another lost city destroyed, and uh, we made it out alive. Barely. <sighs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I wish you could have been there. No, it, it's literally unbelievable. You, you tell me you stumble upon yet another archaeological <laughs> gold mine, and somehow you manage to walk away with nothing. Yeah, well, it's a story of my life, I guess. But, you know, I've managed to grab a few trinkets here and there. Mm. Paid off the car, the house, the engagement ring. Yeah, this has been uh, quite a swath of time I can't believe, I, that you have not That's my wife. had to significantly touch the controller. Tonight, it's true. At my place, you're coming to dinner. I can tell her all about you. It is kind of nice having the. Uh, yeah, I gotta tell her all about you. Like, given that's what this game is, and that's what everyone's here for. Like, it's nice having the pacing slowed down what? after several run, run and jump sequences. Mm -hmm. It's. Yeah, and that's gonna, that's gonna, uh, your your mileage may vary depending on what you come to a game like this for. Definitely, you know, I have friends who are very frustrated with this part. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do as well. I, I have some friends who just keep hoping the uh, Uncharted games will be less this over time, but uh. So this is how I got out. Yeah, well. This is what they are. Yeah, right? and it's like you, you don't go to a Marvel movie and and wish for realism or scientific accuracy. Right? Exactly. Like, yeah, I wish they'd be more scientifically accurate. <laughs> yeah, no, that's I agree, and and I personally like what the Uncharted games do. I, I have fun with these sort of a uh, Metal Gear style hybrid game movie experiences, but uh, I can completely understand that why not everyone would feel the same way. Well, Naughty Dog 
as opposed to the Metal Gear um, cutscenes. They, um, well, Naughty Dog is relying on Hollywood tropes almost yeah. completely, whereas um, so much of what what's the guy who uh, directs, Kojima? Yeah, yeah. So much of his work is it has a lot of Eastern influence. It's meshed with West too, but it's inscrutable to a lot of people, myself included, to the point where because I'm not understanding the characters or their motivation or the big picture, like none of it <laughs> makes sense to me. So it's just like watching babbling, incoherent babbling for that whole however long cutscene is. That that's when it becomes super tedious. Yeah, and uh, those cutscenes, uh, Kojima cutscenes, can definitely get indulgent <laughs> on the uh, amount of time they take. But uh, I love that guy's face. Yeah, they they really like. This is where you see you see the difference between like entry level and expert lighting technicians is when they can zero in on what makes something interesting to look at and light it that way so that everything is accentuated like knowing what to leave in dark like the whole back of his shoulder is almost completely in shadow because who cares what the back of a shirt looks like yeah but like all the fine wrinkles and aging on his face is lit up so nice Samuel uh, this is older brother telling his backstory, I take it? I believe so. Yeah. Vamanos. Holy shit. Los demás están en posición. Didn't expect we'd shift to, uh, playing the older brother. Yeah. How long have you had this planned? Since the moment I set foot in this That'd be place. funny if they did a uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 uh, switch up in the whole rest <laughs> of the game. You're this guy. <laughs> but yeah, getting back to what, what I was saying in the first episode, like this game is not about innovation. So yeah, it's about execution I mean, and polish. Although I suppose that quote-unquote innovation was already done in like 2002 or whenever Metal Gear Solid 2 came out, so it wouldn't be innovative anymore. True. It would just be annoying. <laughs> you remember how to use it. Yeah, it'll come I wonder if the kinds of things they have Sam versus Drake doing gameplay-wise will be kind of distinguishing them in a way that's tied to their personalities. Like if we will be doing a lot more shooting and killing as Sam or Vice versa, like, I, I don't actually know. Yeah, the me ideally mechanics will reflect characters. The, the aesthetics and the mechanics are all tied into the character, and those elements are telling the story as much or more than the cutscenes. That is, that is my ideal world. Agreed. I mean, Naughty Dog is smart enough and uh, attentive enough to theme and character that they would make a conscious effort to do that. Like, they wouldn't necessarily let themselves be, like, tied down by it if they had something they wanted to do, but I feel like they, where they saw an opportunity, they would. That was really neat. When you came into this hallway, there was a mattress on the floor, and I was thinking, in prison riots, you always see the mattresses and stuff are on fire. I wonder why it's not on fire. <laughs> and then you turn the corner, everything's on fire. So yep. it's like, that's a nice, a nice uh, ramp up there. It's like using um, basically you've got a, a certain set of, of tools in your in your environment toolbox and it's always neat to layer things in right it's like I, I really like uh, song like techno does this a lot right where it starts out with one beat and then it layers in a synth and then it layers in a hi-hat and then it lay right yeah and you just get this sense of progression and build up and that's that's kind of what's happening here with both with the, the lighting and the placing of the enemies and the the intensity of the environment zones like the oh, and now you come into peace yeah you're right that it is smart not build like putting it all in at once and then just kind of escalating on the scale and frequency of it that's actually saving certain elements for later it depends on what you're trying to do sometimes you want to hit 
players with a wall of everything all at once to create a sense of just confusion or panic or being overwhelmed. Um, but for the most part, you for pacing, there's a certain amount of wow that you've got available to you and you want to spread that wow out. You don't want to just stick it all in your chamber at once and then it's gone and everything is mundane after that because you've seen it all. And that is a thing that Naughty Dog tends to be good at. Yep. Over. I have two bullets left. Yeah. Ooh. Ow. That was an interesting fall. I wonder if... I think that went uh, ragdoll. At, on yeah. The... But but it was interesting because he was looked like he was up on his, his elbow and hip and like a, almost struggling to get back up sort of way. I don't know if that was just purely accidental because of physics, but it was interesting. It was. Repeated tile on those metal... <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those things where if you have all the time in the world, you're gonna flip one of those upside down at least, so it's not it's not tiling like that, but man, when you have so much world to fill up, yep. you, you gotta you gotta pick your battles. This is the modern incarnation of the Super Mario Brothers clouds and bushes sharing the same, sharing Those the same frames. thing. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. This time I will take cover. Behind that mysterious oh, blue machine. Yeah, what are these blue machines? I, I'm guessing you're back in the same place. As I think so. I think we're escaping. Is this wanna be the same scene from the brother's point of view before he meets up with Drake? That's a good question. It's possible it is. I don't I don't think it is, but I've not been paying close enough attention to be ever able to say for sure. Should probably stop asking stupid plot questions, because <laughs> anyone watching is just gonna be like, you idiot, it said right there. Yeah, I do I apologize, everybody. <laughs> like we because we are trying to playing this for the first time and also paying more attention to other aspects. We are absolutely not able to pay attention to the story oh. super well. Yeah, it, it, the, <laughs> asking the questions I've been asking makes it seem almost like they've done a bad job at communicating, and that is absolutely not what I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to say. <laughs> yeah, this is just us asking each other, like, were you paying attention for that bit because I missed it? <laughs> so I think for the, the animation for the... Uh, Oh. Again. <laughs> Again, they keep setting these off right when I walk past. <laughs> okay, and he's coming, and now. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry, man. I didn't hey, see you there. Have I haven't gotten a sunset view yet. That's fun. Is it sunset or is the world just on fire? <laughs> this is totally evocative of the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Oh, yeah. There's a, there's a cool sunset with a burning village. And I think there is. I'm almost sure there is. There's certainly a fiery village. Maybe it's at night. So, one of the things they were touting was their destructible environment to try to, to try to ameliorate stop and pop gameplay. And that was a nice explosion. It was, and the and my environment was getting shredded here. Yeah. It looks like uh, the first, w w which is the idea, although the first walls you're behind can take quite a bit of damage so that you're you're observing the effect before it's actually killing you. Yeah. This I, want, game I want to know how baked in the physics on those is. Like, if, if you ran under one of those flopping boards, would it bounce off of you or not? Yeah. There's no good reason to know that. I just want to know. <laughs> just curiosity. <laughs> I 
thing I love about the animation of this game is it really shows... It highlights that even when you are going for realism, you can still stylize the animation and the performance. Like, the way enemies fall when shot in this is totally Hollywood movie get shot and fall in a more kind of dramatic, uh, oh, well. explosive, kind of goofy, unrealistic way. Yeah. But that sort of performance choice is what helps to make this game feel the way it does. I suspect if I watched how... If we compared, like, one-to-one -one how enemies fall in this, even compared to The Last of Us, it would be pretty different looking. Yeah, I think so. It, this um, series is all about evoking action, adventure, Hollywood yep. films. So they're going to pull from that language. Let me find a nice warm body to sleep next to me. Uh, check my brother down. Seems like a pretty good start. Yeah. It is. So, uh, how long do you think it will take for you to retrieve Avery's treasure? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I uh, get back to the States, I can resume my search. How long? Uh, it's kind of hard to say until I get started. You said you know where it is. Yeah. Uh, it's very know, unreasonable to ask anyone how long it's going to take to find a hidden treasure. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Okay, but I've, I've, I've got some very solid Oh, okay. J just, just wait a minute. Take, take, take. Hey, take it easy. Uh, I like you, Samuel. More importantly, I believed you. That is why you were here. I can get it, okay? I, I just need some time. Tell me, Uncle Gio. You see, the problem is, I'm having all of these doubts into my mind. Hector, listen to me. I will find it. I swear. To you. How long? Six months. <laughs> People are lazy. <laughs> always ask for more time than they actually need. Three months. He's seen enough Star Trek to know that every time Scotty tells Kirk <laughs> it's going to take eight hours, it's actually going to take three. Say it. Three months have the treasure. Now, if you run, the treasure, hide the treasure, or do something. They've got the sweat running down the guy's face according to gravity, according to the angle that his face is at, it looks like. Wow. I don't know if that was a custom set of rivulet maps that they have for this scene, or if there's actually a procedural uh, system they have in place. And either answer is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> it's just more work either way. Now, the nearest town is 10 kilometers in that direction towards the sunrise. Been a while since we've seen the sunrise outside, huh? Yeah, it's amazing what Mama. sweat and that kind of a texture on the skin add. Don't worry. Yeah, just in general, the the sheen, the the oils that a skin naturally has, and then yeah, like you said, sweat, rain, yeah, any of that stuff. It's so tricky to get right, and so easy to get wrong. Mm -hmm. Kazar lets me go, and here we are. This is bad. We just pick up the trail where we left off, and wait, trail? Sam, there's no trail. It's got to be Luke Perry. <laughs> Kids from the '90s will know. <laughs> Avery's treasure isn't there. Not that that stopped Rafe. Moron's been digging for years, still hasn't turned up squat. Not really surprised. What does that mean? Well, just Some nice subtle depth of field focus stuff going on in the uh, camera as well. Like uh, Sam is a little bit less in focus, even in that shot there where they're both kind of framed. Just the Saint Dismas Cross. Oh, is it because the one we found was broken and hollow? I'm bothered by his denim jacket. 
<laughs> Which part of it? Uh, it's just got that raisin thing going on where like the wrinkles are right for whatever position it was 3D scanned in, but when you uh, move your arm a different way, the wrinkles are going to fall and move and bend differently. Sure. That's like... To, to do that right, you would have to 3D scan an actor in, you know, a thousand different poses and interpolate between them all. And that's... Yeah, and do full... even Even that is is beyond the scope of a Naughty Dog game yeah. at this point. Or have, like, real physics yeah, actually driving the role. Yeah, actual him. Yeah. And that, there, that's nowhere near real time. Nope. Quality yet. We can do, like, close. flappy capes, but yeah. they're still gonna cut through stuff all the time. If it's a big, simple, Scarf. broad shape, we can do it, but, like, cloths, conf- like, wrapped around a human body, wrinkling and just sticking to it the way it uh, normally does and hanging off it the way it normally does, we're nowhere near that. Oh, man, listen. Yeah, I remember seeing, um... Some Pixar thing where they were talking about developing that tech for, um, uh, was the short that they did with the guy playing chess, the old guy playing chess with himself. Yeah, and those are, yeah, the, uh, like Jerry's game, I think is what it's yeah, called. Yeah, yeah. And that had to be like, what, late 90s? Yeah. They were developing it. It's come a long way since, too. Like, uh, the, I, I saw some of the tech they put together for Brave, and it, uh, it, they, they really had to step it up for Brave in particular, and it's really impressive now. But even so, that's like, that's Pixar within the last five to ten years tech on a yeah. pre-rendered films. Games yeah. are... And frames that can take hundreds of hours to render. Yep. Yeah, games are nowhere near that. Come a long way, though. Well, it's interesting. Um, I don't know if it's because of the kinds of processors that we have or whatever, but the lighting... We've been able to not match, but I think the progress that games have made in lighting has been much faster than in physics. I'm not sure why that is. I think so. Well, I think the progress we've made in lighting is because of the approach we take. And this is a little out of my wheelhouse, so I'm going to be really simplifying. But like, because films work with ray trace lighting, which is way, way more expensive, but it is actually tracking where all the lights are, how the light is bouncing off all of different surfaces, how it's reflecting and reflecting, uh, reflecting, refracting, <laughs> and, <laughs> I like that. and it's just, it's way more computationally expensive. Whereas with games, we only have, we have a much smaller number of lights that are actually in real time, like maybe even just one or two lights that are doing that sort of shadow casting and such in real time. And a lot of the rest of the lighting is baked in to a certain extent to the environment. So we're, we're faking it pretty well in games, but we're not actually doing what movie lighting is doing. Yeah, but perceptually, though, you look at this render and you look at whatever the latest CG movie is. Yeah. And it's not like the CG movie looks a hundred times, at least not to my eye. Sure. I mean, to like to an experience lighter, they will they'll be able to pick out everything. But yeah. like, but as opposed to having a denim jacket on a character in a CG film, folding and wrinkling properly, as opposed to in this game where it's just yeah, not. it's functionally on just kind of when you just if you're not looking super close and nitpicking at it, it has really closed the gap in terms of just the look. Even if we've kind of had to fake a lot of stuff to get there. Yeah. Good. Say it. What if he stole the cross for himself? Not in a million years. Victor Sullivan. Say Victor we're talking about, right? Yes, he's double-crossed people in the past. I really like that that tree coming over the edge there. Yeah. Eye to eye. Huge understanding. But I trust him, all right? He's family. Are they doing a James Bond sneak-in thing? <laughs> he's got a bow tie. Is he going to take that oh, nice. jumpsuit off? Absolutely. Why would they not? <laughs> come through for us. Maybe he just likes bow ties. But I mean, come on, you have to at least just for one second consider the possibility. There. See? Trust. Just try to keep it tuck <laughs> Thanks. Wow, this is almost the exact scene. Remember uh, Tomb Raider when you first come yeah, out of the cave? Yeah, over the, the coastline. Yeah, that's right. It's got a building there now. <laughs> awesome. 
All right, we will uh, progress further and make our way down there. We're gonna next James, time. James Bond it up next time. Yeah, next time. So look forward to that.